Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on August 17th, 2022. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update, as well earthquakes, volcanoes, and a look at world weather. Starting out here on our very active sun, the last 48 hours, yet another M-class solar flare in an earth-facing position, looking at some multiple sunspots earth facing as well large coronal hole which was pretty much blasted in half totally split in half that long v-shaped coronal hole that we've been documenting here with daily events the complexity of our sun has changed yet again looking at last 48 hours incoming and outgoing watch in the last image here as another cme blast takes off from the southeast region of the sun right there whap so yeah yet another cme is thwarted our way amongst the one two three four sunspots that are active on the earth facing disc looking at multi-spectrum that one sunspot in the southern hemisphere just kind of spazzing out and as i said it literally split that coronal hole line in half it is no longer one coronal hole line. That is indicative here at 193 angstroms. Coronal hole northern and southern now. Equatorial region blown out. Sunspot numbers are still on the rise as predicted. High sunspot counts were actually above the predicted values from NASA. Looking at the UV index today. This is from Null School. As we were being hit by the CMEs. Look at that solar X-ray flux. We've seen over 20 solar flares in the past two days. And four of them, five of them, if not five of them, were M-class. And looking at the affected regions today for possible minor radio blackouts. Lasco 2 showing the energy taking off from the southern part of our sun. Stay tuned for the next update. This is all they're giving us right now. We'll be able to see the full extent of the blast in the next video as they update these images. This is all still pretty fresh. Our very active sun. Looking at the real-time solar wind sitting at 508 kilometers per second. Look at the positive and negative polarities there jumping way apart after the triangle flip. Looking at NOAA space prediction spiral still showing all of that energy coming our way and most likely early on the 18th of August and will affect us for at least two days if not longer with all of these events still being pumped towards Earth. So quite a few explosions on our sun due to the flares, bringing CMEs. Schumann Residence for today, a power of 30. Highly energetic still, the last little bit. It has been like this. Amplitude of 30, power of 21, quality of 8.6. Now let's get to earthquakes here the past 24 hours as it's still pretty busy. Just slightly above average. Largest earthquake today being a 5.6 here in Katsura, Japan. Early this morning. As well as 4.3 reported there. Kuril Islands 4.7 and a 4.8. Then we get to the Philippines. This was a quiet region yesterday. Not so quiet anymore. 4.9 there in Socorro, Philippines. And a 5.5, pretty sizable and very deep. 487 kilometer depth, Timor Leste, Indonesia. So, heads up, Indonesia. Many active volcanoes throughout the region. 4.6 there, Western Indonesia. As well, lots of activity here in Greece, largest being a 4.5, but there is a lot of minor activity around the region. South America, pretty quiet today. 4.5 there, Argentina reported yesterday. As well, a 4.6 here, Ecuador today. Minor activity continuing through Puerto Rico. Pretty rare earthquake here to report in Centerville, Maine, 3.0 magnitude. As well, a 3.8 here in Hermley, Texas, 6 kilometer depth. 
activity increasing through California as well. 3.2 there. And Walker, California, as well at 4.4 here. Pistol River, Oregon. Pretty sizable earthquake there after last night's update. Now, this was the region I was forecasting last night. 5.0 in Alaska as well. So we definitely did see an uptick, and it will probably most likely will continue here over the next few days, especially as the space of weather events start to penetrate our planet. We'll see how our magnetosphere tests to it all. That's the last 24 hours for earthquakes. A quick browse at the last seven days. to the Pacific Disaster Center showing the most recent satellite imagery and as well looking at the most recent volcanoes getting updated today. Nevadas de Ruiz in Colombia as well as Sabancaya in Peru, Reventador in Ecuador. Many flood alerts heading out across Australia, South Island, New Zealand, North Island, New Zealand, Western Australia, Tasmania, Victoria, New South Wales, Landslide in Japan, Sangay in Ecuador, Semeru in Indonesia, definitely a volcano on watch right now with that deep earthquake today. So across the world we're seeing increased moisture, we're seeing increased dry spells, droughts, and wildfires. Welcome to our ever-changing planet. It is what it is. And I'm surely grateful to be here every day and to be able to broadcast to my friends and family from around the world. I want to welcome all of the new followers as well. Thank you so much for hitting that play button and inviting me into your living rooms. Keeping humanity aware and prepared with daily events worldwide. Quick look at satellite imagery from around the world. Pretty dry through North Africa. And some spotty showers moving into parts of Europe. But nothing major to report for weather systems. Having a look here at the next few days. Brought to you by Venture Sky. Big system coming from Alberta. By this weekend, we'll bring scattered showers throughout Ontario. Possible thunderstorms within it. As well, we've got this low pressure system through Texas. By this weekend, we'll bring some rain to parts of North and East Texas, and then watch as that moves southward towards the Gulf and inflames many thunderstorms all across the coastline there for next Thursday into Friday. Pretty big systems affecting you. Looking across the West Coast, most of the moisture is heading up towards Alaska. All these low-pressure systems being thrown northward with that large high-pressure ridge just off the coast of BC really drying things out through BC. As well, a pretty big system here developing in the North Pacific. Long trough line of moisture stretching across the Pacific. As well, there are a couple tropical systems that are developing in the long range. Looks like this one could head towards Tokyo. As well, another one west of that heading towards Taiwan and most likely South China after that. So heads up, everybody, friends and family from around the world. Lots is changing. And this is a look at our world weather. More detailed forecast with tomorrow night's Daily Dew. Just giving you a browse of all the major systems right now. As well, a look at our upper level winds. This is winds at 10,000 feet. Showing the polar vortex in our southern hemisphere. And a little comparison to the northern hemisphere. And also we're going to do a comparison to this time last year, 2021. Quite a big difference, especially along the equator. There were much stronger winds last year. This year, not so much. 
along the equator. Therefore, we have not seen many hurricanes or typhoons. Very quiet season. Give you a quick browse here at all the certain levels, different levels of the atmosphere on our planet today. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Mike with Daily Dew. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your daily do. Bye-bye now. Please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.